pleading guilty after your house was common sense. Uh -huh. Actually, you go to court mm -hmm. praying that the thing goes fast and you get jailed. Uh -huh. mm. To go anywhere is, be anywhere is better than your house. Okay. So that's how I got my five years. Those of us who took the progressive side mm -hmm. created a front against the establishment. Uh -huh. yeah. You are the only lawyer chairman <laughs> since independence up to now. <laughs> So, <laughs> if I may talk tribal. My name is Nekesa Muramara for Culture Team. Today we are visiting Zuripoa Hotel. We want to meet with Mr. Buke Wafula, the owner of this place. Wafula is a person known to so many people, but people have not gotten to get to his story. Today, Culture Hub wants to bring the story to you. We are going to get there interact with him, sit with him, and actually get to understand the kind of person that he is. Welcome and listen to his story. Thank you. So my name is Nekesa Muramara mm -hmm. from Culture Hub TV. Mm -hmm. We are actually privileged to be here with you. Mm -hmm. We don't take it for granted. We know yeah. you have a very busy schedule, but that you agreed to see us, yeah. we appreciate. So many people have talked about who is Ibuke. Different people know you differently. Mm. But probably you can, in brief, just tell us who is Wafla Buke. Yeah. Well, Wafla Buke is, um, is a Kenyan, born in Chebkube, uh, born of a father called Timothy Wafla Masielo, a counselor. Um, grew up like everybody else grew up. I hear Jesus grew up like any other young man. I also grew <laughs> up like any other young man. Uh -huh. I I have uh, a school in 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 uh, in, in Chepkube, school called Waranga. Mm -hmm. Went on under the tutor under the the, 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 the leadership of a father who was a political person, mm -hmm. and they went through school like everybody else. Second school Kibabi High School. Mm -hmm. Then I went to Ambira High School. Mm -hmm. uh, for form five and six, mm -hmm. then I proceeded to the university and went through a lot and managed to go through so many other things. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You are popularly known go by the name Wafula Buke. Mm. Does it mean you don't have a Christian name, or you prefer being called by your mm. native names? You know. Um, initially, my father called me Robert uh -huh. Buke Wafula. Mm -hmm. My father loved American politics so much. Mm -hmm. He thought America was uh, the epitome of freedom. Mm -hmm. And so named most of my brothers and sisters mm -hmm. after American political leaders. Uh -huh. We had uh, Robert myself after Robert Kennedy. We had Wilson after Woodrow Wilson, I think. Then we had Hubbard after Hubbard Hoover, just, just a chain of Americans. So I actually have an English name, mm -hmm. Robert Bukiwafula, Robert, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, you mentioned that you, your father was a counselor. Yes. Meaning you grew up in a political family. Yeah. How, how was it growing up as a, as a child of a politician? You see, in those days, mm -hmm. uh, leadership had a different characteristic. Uh, compared to the current one. Mm -hmm. Leaders in those days were committed to their cause. Mm -hmm. And my father was a very committed person to the mm -hmm. cause of serving his people within his ward. Mm -hmm. And um, we hosted very many people. Mm -hmm. He visited very many people, mm -hmm. attended many functions, mm -hmm. had very little time with the family mm -hmm. uh, because of his commitment to the service of the people who elected him. Mm -hmm. So I can say that... Uh, our time with uh, my father was uh, a lesson in how to put the people first uh -huh. in public service. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, given your background, uh, mm -hmm. you come across as somebody who really have who had a good background in education. Mm -hmm. You have mentioned having gone to St. Mary's Kibabi. Mm -hmm. Uh, how was your life at St. Mary's Kibabi mm. and did, did it play any part mm. in your future political life or did it shape, give a shape to your future endeavors in your political life? You, you, you see, I think um, 
the making of uh, somebody's political thoughts yes. is something that can be confined to one institution. Yes. In fact, I think the greatest lesson I learned about that gave me ideological direction mm -hmm. was an experience I had in, uh, in primary mm -hmm. when my father had been jailed. My mother says he was jailed for embezzling public funds, but he says he was jailed for mismanaging public funds. Mm -hmm. I don't know which is which, but I trust my mother. Mm -hmm. So when he was in prison, life was very hard. Mm -hmm. Hard as a, as a family that was poor. Mm -hmm. So I used to put on his shirt because mm -hmm. there was no money for the trousers. Uh -huh. So you became a subject of ridic ridicule. Mm -hmm. And one time the sons, the chief's son, mm -hmm came and uh, stripped me before girls. <laughs> and that was a peak of humiliation. Actually, we ended out and had a fight mm -hmm. at break time. Mm -hmm. You know, those days, to square fight it out. Rules, yes. Yeah. Mm. I didn't fare very badly. Uh, <laughs> but um, the truth is that the humiliation sank so deep in me. And mm -hmm. from that time, I took a, a position that I would use my life to mm -hmm. ally mm -hmm. with those who are lowly. Mm -hmm. I suppose those were high, uh -huh. like the chief was. Mm -hmm. And that has never left my mind. Up yeah. to now. So I must say, at the level of taking a class position in politics, mm -hmm. I took a class position at that particular stage. Mm -hmm. And uh, the rest was uh, inspired by my father mm -hmm. as a servant mm -hmm. who really cared in lifting people from poverty. Mm -hmm. So that's where I basically pick rudiments. Mm -hmm. As far as not being tribal, <clears throat> and having a nationalistic uh, outlook, this I pick from uh, my experience in West Pokot, where I was learning as a, as a student. Mm -hmm. And uh, you grow up and come to realize that there's need for society to think as one. Mm -hmm. Now, Mount Elgo is another lesson mm -hmm. in how to really have a nationalistic outlook. Mm -hmm. Conflict, 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 mm -hmm. not much output. Mm -hmm. So you end up realizing that there's need for you mm -hmm. to to have an outlook that embraces every resident of our republic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Kibabi comes in as just another place where I'm given an academic drill. Mm -hmm. But in terms of moral fiber, mm -hmm. I think I was already fully met when uh -huh. I answered that one. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, you, Mr. Buke, you have mentioned about having come from Chebukube. It is remembered in the, in the mm -hmm. 70s. Yes. Actually, your area was the epicenter of coffee smuggling. The, yeah. in, is it famous or infamous? Eh? Yes. Yeah. Uh, we, call, we, we can look at it as it was a menace. Eh? Yes. Mm. What, what part did it play in the economics mm. of, of Chebukube then, now, and if it is still having its roots in the current economic setup of the area? You see... Chepkube is supposed to go down in history as, uh, in our history as residents of Chepkube as a, a lost opportunity. Yeah. Because you know, 1976, most of the residents of the place had not embraced the market system, business or peasants. Yeah. So all of us are peasants planting food and mm -hmm. eating it. Mm -hmm. So when coffee came, mm -hmm. Those who had been exposed to capitalism and knew how to move goods from one market to another, another. Mm. were the ones who benefited. Yeah. So even the little benefit that befell us, mm -hmm. it came as just fragments that fall off the table. Uh -huh. But our people did not benefit so you as much as... So you are not the main players. Yes, they are not main players. Yeah, yeah. You can remember that it was, uh, it was uh, an experience big enough that attracted even the head of state, Mamangina, yeah, yeah, yeah. all the big players came yes. here to make money. Yeah, yeah. You can imagine if it came now, this tender writing, people write tenders and yeah. do everything, would really, would really have benefited. Yeah. So Jebkube is not something I want to celebrate. It mm. is a, an a economic opportunity, opportunity yeah. that didn't benefit us. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, during your time, eh, uh, after you had done your O level and gone to A level, mm. you had to take this thing at the NYS. Mm. It is a program that the government came up with, with its own reasons. Eh? Mm. But maybe you can actually be able to tell us about the NYS and if the program actually helped you guys. Mm. Or what, 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 what part did it play to mm. form the leaders of today? You see, the NYS comes on stage 
mm. after a military coup of the 1980s mm -hmm. and the politics of resistance and more his efforts to try and calm the political storms in the country. Mm -hmm. So I think he looked at um, the experience in Tanzania mm -hmm. where all the youth are uh, given some training mm -hmm. and preparation to participate in, an, in a military engagement, mm -hmm. if at all it, it's so required. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> then he thought that conformity mm -hmm. and loyalty to Nyerere was had its origins uh -huh. in inducting people in the politics of the nation. Mm -hmm. Then I think he also looked at uh, what Mobutu tried to do. Mm -hmm. After attempts on Mobutu, Mobutu rounded up university students, got them beaten, mm -hmm. and they took them through some training. Mm -hmm. You see? So I want to think that uh, the intention was to basically subdue mm -hmm and uh, drill students into some kind of uh, soldierly code of conduct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with that as an objective, I think the National Youth Service did not serve more well. Mm -hmm. It became a place where we go to understand the shortcomings of the system mm -hmm. and uh, what you would do mm -hmm. to try and collect it. Mm -hmm. Actually, when I end the National Youth Service, my objective at that time <clears throat> was to to do education. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do education. I love teaching. But then I went to the university. Everybody who came to the university mm -hmm. was scared of thinking. <laughs> professor comes there and they can only spread lies. Uh -huh. <laughs> I remember Munoko came there. We even clashed. Uh -huh. Because we asked him, I asked him, um, um, you people are banning political parties. Mm -hmm. You ban political parties. Yet you only have one party. Mm -hmm. Where do you want the rest to go? Mm -hmm. Are you not justifying the decision by people like Gugi or Thiong and Martin Cook to try and at least become rebels? Mm -hmm. I told him that uh, he's giving us a Ugandan situation where I'm seven, that time was the bush. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so is he telling us he should also go to the bush and fight for change? Mm -hmm. Actually, I was very annoyed. He had mm -hmm. a very, I'm saying that the National Service mm -hmm. made us know. Mm -hmm that uh, there was need for rebellion. Mm -hmm. So when I left the National Service, mm -hmm. I actually had made up my mind to go and study political science now. So you changed your mind at the NYS? At the NYS. Oh, okay. And wanted to go and study political science mm -hmm. so that I can understand what mm -hmm. is this that makes a professor mm -hmm. come before you and just speak like a stupid person mm -hmm. as a professor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I moved from KU and joined the National <coughs> at Kenyatta University. Mm -hmm. And on reaching there, on Nairobi University, mm -hmm. I realized the problem was still there. Mm -hmm. Even their teaching was a problem. Mm -hmm. People are cautious and scared. Mm -hmm. So I discovered that even the education I've gone for, I can't get it. So I realized the solution is to remove the government in power. That's why mm -hmm. I decided to work with the, with the, to join the democratic forces and mm -hmm. use the inverse platform. Mm -hmm. to really reinforce mm -hmm. people like Jeremogi Ogingo Dingo are fighting for change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. So from the NYS, you joined the University of Nairobi. Yes. Which was actually and still is a premier university in Kenya. Mm -hmm. How did it feel or how was it at the University of Nairobi? The University of Nairobi was a disappointment. Because, <clears throat> you know, we had read books like, you know, Betraying the city mm -hmm. by Francis Mboga. Mm -hmm. We thought the university was a hotbed, a hotbed of intellectual discussions, mm -hmm. you know, debates. That's what we expected. Mm -hmm. We expected free thinking. Mm -hmm. Then we reached there and we realized <clears throat> after a short time, some lecturers are picked and detained for thinking mm -hmm. freely. Mm -hmm. So the Ruby University was a very big disappointment. Mm -hmm. Actually, the best teachers I ever encountered were in Form 6 mm -hmm. rather than the university. Yeah. So at the University of Nairobi, you, <coughs> you interacted at the, at, with the high and mighty. I think that is also when you uh, mm. resolve mm. to actually fight for the, for the, for the people mm. came up. Mm. You are actually a student leader. Yes. Maybe as a student leader, what are, the, what are some of the challenges you saw the student facing that gave you the push to be mm. able to talk for them and be able to actually challenge the authorities that were? You see, 
the National Youth Service prepared us mm. for for the university mm. because what we realized as a team, as a young people, not all of us, but mm. a handful of us who are politically conscious, mm -hmm. we said we're going to the university and the agenda we must have is to try and be part of the national effort to bring mm -hmm. change in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So what inspired our conduct more was not the state of life, was not so much the state of, of life at the university, mm -hmm. but also mm -hmm. the way things were in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we reached there and, um, and the government has made life so comfortable. We eat better than I've ever eaten since I left the university. Mm -hmm. But still you could see that outside people could not speak. Mm -hmm. Mm. So that's how I find myself saying that now I'm not going to be follow the lineage of those who betray. Mm -hmm. At the time we joined the university, Titus Adungos was in prison, mm -hmm. chair, founding chairman of the university, mm -hmm. pushing 10 years. Mm -hmm. The time we joined, there was Mwanderon Ganga. Mm -hmm. He was in prison mm -hmm. for standing up to really uh, tell Moi that this country belonged to all of us. Mm -hmm. So now the choice at the time was, do you join democratic lineage mm -hmm. of leadership or mm -hmm. do you join the conservative lineage, mm -hmm. which was by that time being led by PLO, Lumumba, Lumumba. Mm -hmm. and we had other people like uh, Dumandiri, the current president of the Labour Court, I think, mm -hmm. that was uh, my rival at the university. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we had that kind of lineage. Mm -hmm. So those of us who took the progressive side mm -hmm. created a front mm -hmm. against the establishment. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mr. Buke, mm. Kenyans are aware that uh, <coughs> your studies at the University of Nairobi were cut short with mm. the news that chilled the country when he, it was, uh, I'll quote verbatim, eh? mm. when Yekiti wa chama cha wanafunzi ja chuo kikucha Nairobi soni buwana wafula buke amewekwa mm. korokoroni. Mm. News that was picked the world over. Yeah. And uh, even Radio Germany and the BBC in 1987. Yeah. And uh, everybody, everything came to a standstill. Yeah. Maybe you'll mind to tell us exactly what happened. You see, I... When I arrived at the university, I stood mm -hmm. twice. Yeah. Uh, when I arrived the first uh, few months, America bombed Tripoli. Mm -hmm. That time, America was trying to subdue any emergence mm -hmm. of uh, socialist governments in Africa. Mm -hmm. So they bombed Tripoli and even killed the daughter of Gaddafi. Mm -hmm. So as a first year, I waited for the university, mm -hmm. the university I used to hear about, mm -hmm. to organize a, a, a demonstration. Mm -hmm. Then I realized there's nothing. So we decided we shall do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I called my friends, we did preparations and put placards. And so before we could uh, have the demo, uh, the guys came to my room and arrested me. Mm -hmm. And we went through some of this, the, 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 the demo was sabotage that was in the papers. Mm -hmm. Said the more flops in the university. Mm -hmm. So that's how I made the university for the first time and we had a fight and they said, please, never again. Mm -hmm. So I kept quiet. Now, mm -hmm. second year, mm -hmm. I again now thought the best way to provide progressive leadership mm -hmm. is to meet with the chairman of the organization. Yes. So I stand for chairman. Mm -hmm. That time I was popular among first years and second years because mm -hmm. I had, had, had done they had some, seen you in your, had, yeah, in action yeah, in the yeah. national mm -hmm. service especially. Mm -hmm. So the university came up. I was running against the current justice of the labor court. I think is Dumandiri. Mm -hmm. Uh, so um, they organized and rigged the election and made sure that uh, I lose. Mm -hmm. I petitioned and uh, they couldn't listen to the petition. They mm -hmm. accepted there was something, some things that were wrong, mm -hmm. but they said uh, they were going to punish those who are culprits. I said, no, don't punish. Let's have a, re a rerun. Mm -hmm. They refused. Mm -hmm. So when he organized for his first rally, mm -hmm. I came with, the, I was there with my people. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got him chest, mm -hmm. and I took over mm -hmm. under coup. Those days, coups in, in Africa were fashion. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I also <laughs> took over, suspended the constitution, declared myself chairman, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Him was chest. Mm -hmm. So that time again, the, 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 the state moved in mm -hmm. and uh, demobilized us. Mm -hmm. So in third year, this time, they had no way out. Yeah. So I stood. And uh, they realized there's no way they can stand not, in my yeah, way. Yeah. yeah, even people are saying, you mess around, we shall burn everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they let me get elected. Mm -hmm. 
but um, after nine days, they came for me and uh, jailed me for and took me to your house mm -hmm. for the tortures that are now widely known mm -hmm. how they're taking place. Mm -hmm. And then I was taken to court mm -hmm. and um, charged with uh, an act, doing an act prejudicial to the interests of the Republic of Kenya. Of Kenya. It amounts to something like espionage, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. which has carries a life sentence. Mm -hmm. And uh, pleading guilty after your house was common sense. Uh -huh. Actually, you go to court mm -hmm. praying that the thing goes fast and you get jailed. Uh -huh. mm. To go anywhere. So it was a better, relief. Anywhere is better than your house. Oh, okay, okay. So <laughs> that's how I got my five years <laughs> in prison. Yeah. <laughs> so in short, you are telling us you were you are the chairman of Sony for a record nine days. Nine days. Uh -huh. And uh, the only Louia chairman. <laughs> <laughs> Since independence, up to now, <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> even we talk tribal. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Buki, I learned us to take a very short break. Eh? Uh, <laughs> then when we come back, let uh, us pick it up from there. Okay. Thank you very much. Eh? Uh.